What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I will be installing the Hot Racing Aluminum Link Set for the SCX24. So this is my C10. I've been doing a series on it. If you haven't seen the series, click right here. Check out that playlist. I'm legit going through the entire, uh, entire truck and we're pretty much modifying it. So if you want to learn how to do a specific uh, mod, check it out. Might be on the playlist, might not be yet, but I'm definitely getting through the entire truck. So like I said earlier, this is the Hot Racing Aluminum Link Set. Um, I believe this was pretty expensive, not gonna lie. This is probably one of the most expensive mods I've done on the truck. I believe this is $30 for what? Two, four, six, seven aluminum links. So pretty expensive. Um, this is part number SXTF133J01. So yeah. So pretty much um, the links down on the truck are plastic. So we're gonna upgrade them with these aluminum links and it should help out um, just being more reliable. So these are plastic, so Axial does provide you with extra links in case they snap. Um, I haven't snapped one. I don't know, I don't live in a cold area, so maybe if you live in a cold area, you snap them before, but I've never done that. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna replace them so I can have a video and show you guys how to do it. So when installing the links on your truck, you might wanna know where each link goes. So this Y link is pretty explanatory. It goes in the Y section up front. Then we have a 50 millimeter link, a 51 millimeter link, and then we have a 58 millimeter link. I believe it's 58, 58.5 millimeter link. So the 58.5 is clearly the longest one back here. And then you might wanna know where the 50 and the 51 goes. They're pretty close in size, so it might be a little bit hard to tell, unless you can tell a millimeter just by sight, it's kinda hard. So I did some research online and I found out that the 51 millimeter bars go up front. So that would be this link right here. And then the 50 millimeter link goes back here. So they're all pretty connected right here to the skid plate where I have the skid plate and where I have these rock sliders. So it should be a pretty quick install. I do have my 1.3 hex, my Wera 1.3 hex. If you wanna check it out, link's in the description. But uh, this should be a pretty easy mod. Yeah, so let's uh, go through this. I'm just gonna start unscrewing um, the links. So I kinda, I kinda wanna do one at a time. So we're gonna do the 58.5 first. Actually, you know what? I should take off the wheels to make it a little bit easier. So I don't know about you guys, but if you have any idea on how to, ke how to keep these little hub hexes uh, attached to the truck and not the wheel, um, Drop down in the comments below because it's really annoying when I have to take off these wheels and these hexes come off. I don't know. Should they stay with the wheel or should they stay with the truck? I'm really not too sure. If you have any insight on that, let me know because I'd really appreciate it. So when installing these links on the truck, I don't know if you can tell, but the mounting points are different. So it, it's kind of concaved on this side and then on this other side it's flat. So you want the flat side to be against the... Um, the inside of the truck because you want to see the hot racing you want to see the hot racing logo and the the measurement on the outside of the truck because i mean I f that's how it's designed i guess i don't know how to explain it but the flat side goes against the inside of the truck and the concave side goes on the outside you want to be able to read what's uh being printed on the outside that's that's a good way to think about it i don't think it would be too big of a deal if you mixed up the 51s and the 50s i mean it's one millimeter difference um i don't think that would affect much, but if you want to be precise and accurate, just make sure you don't mix those guys up. So I'm just going to get my hex, and we're just going to start tackling this out, knocking it out. So yeah, I would recommend having a pair of needle nose just in case, because definitely going to help out with things. So there's a little bit of a pull to pull out, but that's the little plastic piece there, so little pivoting piece how it's designed but it pops right on out so there are the front pieces we're gonna get the back screws real quick so yeah having a pair of pliers will definitely be a little bit of an advantage so there we are so here are the old plastic links here are the new aluminum links they definitely have a little bit of a weight to them so I guess you are also adding weight to, weight to your truck. So like I said earlier, you want the wording to be on the outside. You want the wording to be on the outside of the truck when you look at it. So I think 
That looks about right to me. So when installing this rear link back here, I made the mistake of installing it first back here by the axle when I should have installed it over here by the skid plate first. So I found it easier to install, to hold it and kind of jam it in there at this point and then screw it in back here versus doing it back here and then doing it up front. I don't know, something in the process of it just makes it a little bit easier to control. So I recommend that you uh, connect it here first and then back here. So there is the longest 58.5 millimeter link installed in the rear. So next I kind of want to tackle this, uh, this Y link. And then there's a screw back here on the driver's side of the truck. This one's definitely gonna be a challenge to get in and out of the truck. So there is the old one. Here is the new one. Slide it through here. So maybe when installing this Y-Link, it'd be a uh, smart to uh, to unscrew the shock mount. Let's see, if that, let's see if that helps. Now I'm gonna connect that part of the Y-Link to the top part of this servo right here. So yeah, for sure, definitely unscrewing the, um, the shocks definitely helps out with this process right here. So now I'm gonna get this other screw right in here. So I would definitely recommend uh, disconnecting the shock towers to help out with uh, easy access to these links because it's definitely helping me out. So I must admit, this is taking me a lot longer than I thought it was. I thought these links were gonna go in and out real easy, but it's actually quite hard to get past all the other components on the truck and get to these links in these small areas. So like we said earlier, the 51 bars are gonna go up front. So those are gonna be these guys right here. So I do gotta be honest, I thought this install was gonna be super easy, super quick, and it's turning out to be a pain in the butt. These links are just so small and they articulate so much that it's hard to get the proper angles to get the screws to line up perfectly. So uh, definitely, I would say this is probably a, not a beginner, not an advanced, but you gotta be a little, you gotta know a little bit about what you're doing when you're putting these links on the truck. Cause this, this is not a walk in the park. Like see right now I'm screwing this in and it's not catching. I gotta articulate a little bit. And there it finally catches. So you gotta you gotta play with it. You gotta move the suspension around a little bit to get things to fit properly. So on this last link back here, it's super hard to get back here. So I pretty much unlinked the shocks from the frame and I'm just pretty much lifting the whole thing back. So now I got this whole wide open section to access this little area right here, which should help out a lot. So it's been such a hassle for me to put this thing on that I popped off one of the little O-rings on the side of this little joint right here, this little ball joint right here. So be extremely careful when you're trying to fit that in there because I barely noticed that little O-ring and that kind of holds this whole thing together. So if you lose one of those guys, you're, you're pretty much out of luck. So be very careful. So there we are. All links on the truck definitely took me some time was not easy at all. One of the hardest, most time consuming additions to the truck for sure. So I'm just gonna put on the wheels and then I'll, we'll do a quick overview. All right, YouTube, I have all the links installed. Hot Racing is pointing out towards uh, me. So it's, I should, you should be able to read it right way if you put them on right. So yeah, so the Hot Racing should be pointing out. Okay, anyways, so the links are on the truck. This definitely took me a lot longer than I expected. I was really expecting this to be like a 10 minute thing. This turned out to be like a half an hour thing. The parts, some of the parts down here by the, um, by the skid plate, I, they, took, they took me so long to kind of jimmy in 
to the proper mounts. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. And the little O-rings kept on popping out. This was definitely one of the hardest things I had to do because these links really depend on the suspension and the angles of the truck. So it was kind of hard to work on it upside down. Definitely gonna have to think of a better way to do that. Maybe with some pliers or something to guide me next time. But uh, the links are in. The truck does feel quite a bit heavier. Um, some things I want to point out real quick. Taking off the shocks off the frame mount definitely helps out with installing the links. It kind of keeps things out of the way. I would definitely install the links here first at the skid plate and then install them at the axle. Um, once, Because when they're at the axle, they're kind of hard to move around because you have to move this whole axle around to this little point. So do this point first and then you can move on to here. Um, overall, this mod was what, $30? I think next time I'll probably think twice about spending the $30. Um, there's not really a performance upgrade at all for these links. Uh, they're just kind of to have the durability compared to these plastic ones that will snap if you're in a cold area. So don't throw away your old parts, always save them. You never know if you might need them in the future. So that's how you install the links. Uh, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you. <laughs> oh man.